This is the History Museum. Sorry about Mr. Smart. We're gonna be doing, doing some comments on the lodge stuff, so. All right, so Mr. Smart, what's this right here? This exhibit is a little synopsis of our history. As you know, we've been around since 1940. Mm -hmm. It's now 2015. We're celebrating our 75th anniversary, and the Order of the Era is celebrating its centennial, 100th anniversary. So this is a little outline of, of year by year highlights about us, and information about Chief Atacumacula, our namesake of our lodge. Uh, this is uh, the chapters in our lodge, and here we are in the in the Blue Ridge Council. This item right here is kind of unique. Some years ago, the National Museum of the American Indian, which is part of the Smithsonian, was open, and there was the opportunity for individuals or organizations to buy a sponsorship. And so I bought a sponsorship in the name of our lodge, and so you can go up there, and there's that line engraved on one of the, one of the walls there. And then this case is some of our earliest items and most notable items from the early years. One of the first items that, that we had was a neckerchief with the black triangle with the chief shown there on it. The yellow neckerchief is not unique to Atacula Kula. Sky Yucca Lodge used a similar yellow neckerchief with their Indian on a mountain patch on it. But this is considered to be our, our earliest issue. After that came the oval shape or football shape, shape patches with either three arrows and three arrows, or the arrow with three arrows on one side and two on the other. So that's the variations of that of that one. And then our first flap that was issued, it has no fleur-de-lis because that wasn't required at that time. And then later, the fleur-de-lis had to be added. But we had our early flaps, and then we started, like many lodges, to have a different color border for the ordeal, brotherhood, and vigil parts of, of the lodge. So those were our first OBV, or, or Ordeal Brotherhood Vigil. Then we've had some anniversary issues through the years that are shown here. So this one basically takes us up through our 70th anniversary and the anniversaries back back from, from there. All right. And what's this right here? This is interesting. I came across this on eBay some years ago. Back in the day, our flaps uh, were made on a Swiss embroidery machine. And this was the designer's pattern by which the embroidery was done. And from this one, you can see there were 5,162 individual stitches mm -hmm. that went into the embroidery of our, of our lodge flap there. So this came up on eBay, and I was fortunate enough to be the high bidder and get it so that I could keep it for our, our life. All right, and Johnny Ray, can you talk a little bit about your book? Sure. Well, approximately 10 years ago, uh, our lodge, in an effort to try to pass along our traditions uh, to our young youngsters, uh, several of the adults were asked, uh, can we preserve that in, in the form of a book? So in 19, about 2000, we actually put together a book and it was requested that we put a book together to so keep updated mm -hmm. over the years. So we put plastic sheets and we have plastic, uh, pages printed each year and put in plastic sheets so we can put the new ones in for our youngsters as they come along to preserve the traditions of our lives. All right. And um, do you all know anything about this stuff over here? This stuff here, as Russell mentioned, uh, the earlier stuff <coughs> was, was mentioned in the first case, but over the years we've had several uh, versions of our patches, special events, essay activities, uh, and also other mem memorabilia that our lodge wanted to put out. Mm -hmm. uh, as he mentioned, in the early 70s, uh, the National came out with a requirement that you had to put the floor to or put BSA on all your patches. So after our first flap, we come along with our second flaps, carrying on with the tradition of Ordeal, Brotherhood, and Vigil. Uh, but we just put our Florida leaves on it. Uh, over the years, and going through having to order more patches and order them from different uh, embroidery companies, you can see a few, a few traditional changes in the Florida Lee, in the color of the patch, uh, in the type of Florida Lee, the size of the Florida Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, as you come along with some others, you can see a, a difference in the color of green. Uh, we call this our lime green border, uh, which was a one-run loom 
uh, for the Brotherhood patch. And you can see over the years, we've actually changed the tradition of the Florida Lee and our color. Uh, in 1992, as part of our tradition and our contingent going to NOAC, and mm -hmm. follow along with their na national tradition, uh, our lodge actually started making special event lodge, lodge flaps. You can see in 1992, we had uh, a NOAC flap mm -hmm. for 1992. Uh, we also had one in 1994. 1996, uh, 1998, and we started making our traders and our contingent flaps. But as you go down through the, the list here, you can see some more of our NOAC patches as we've designed them over the years. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Smart, what's the stuff up here? That, in, talking about NOAC, interestingly, back in the early NOAC days, what was done to identify a contingent was to take one of their flaps or one of their lodge pieces and sew it on a neckerchief mm -hmm. and so the members of the contingent would wear this neckerchief to identify what lodge they were from and actually they had to give the neckerchief back to the lodge when they came back and eventually though they were allowed to keep them and so that's how they got into circulation but that was our first NOAC contingent piece and also an early lodge considered our first uh, first neckerchief right mm -hmm. oh my God. All right, we're going to move down. All right, and Mr. Johnny Ray and Mr. Holler, you probably know a little bit more about this stuff that recently came out. So uh, This year, uh, which is the 75th anniversary of our lodge, carrying on with our tradition, we also designed uh, some uh, patches to celebrate our 75th anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of our uh, fellowship in the recent months, we actually had uh, Chief Atacula Kula. Uh, from the recent years of the Cherokee Lodge come and visit with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we paid tribute to him coming and visit with him by making him part of the design of this patch. This is also the first CSP that the Lodge issued. It's never had any others, and so we issued that out. And this is a special run because the flap and the dangles all together, and there's limited production on those. Mm -hmm. Yep, and here's our uh, NOAC area right here. These are our latest patches. We'll be taking to NOAC this year, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our, what we call our uh, contingent patch, uh, delegate patch, and then we also have a couple of traders. Mm -hmm. uh, the traders were designed by some of the boys in the lodge this year. Okay. And uh, Mr. Holler, can you explain some of the LLD LDC stuff? These are all the uh, patches that you get from the LLDC. This is in, he started in 2001, was it? Yeah. And they went five years with this type border, and then they changed them in 2006 to uh, a new LLDC patch, and then started using the birds. And they do five per year, or five per uh, accessory there. And then uh, they changed the same thing to white lettering as opposed to black. And then now that we're ending up this fifth year, 2015 will be the last one. For 2016, they're going to go with gold lettering on the same bird. That's, and that'll go for five years also. All right. And uh, Mr. Smart, explain yeah. some of this stuff right here. Now, this whole table has to do with the National Order of the Era of 1915 was the first ceremony at Treasure Island. It really wasn't called the Order of the Era. It was called the Wamakton Dink, which is a word for brotherhood in the Lenny Lenape Delaware language. So Wamakton Dink, and then that later was added with the other W's. A wing of Lauxic and went to Hemwe and it became the WWW or uh, for the Order of the Era. But the Order of the Era didn't really become a part, official part of the National Boy Scouts until 1948. Mm -hmm. It was an experimental program and then it got a little more stature and Erner Goodman was in and out of it in his role as a professional scouter. But in 1948 it became an actual official program of the Boy Scouts of America. And although there were many, many lodges certainly in operation by that time. This piece is interesting. That's the original National Order of the Era Committee, the National Committee. This was their first patch that they used, and they still issue patches. And then going back to the early days, the Distinguished Service Award given to national involvement in the Order of the Era, this is one of the early varieties of the DSA, or Distinguished Service Award, with the green ribbon. And then since then, there have been a variety of white, red arrow ribbons used with the same arrowhead and arrow 
uh, pendant that hangs on it there, but that's the Distinguished Service Award. Mm -hmm. But these are the first two NOACs that were official when the OA was a national program of the Boy Scouts. And then the handbooks, South Carolina has a great connection to the Order of the Era uh, hand, hand, handbook. Uh, J. Rucker Newberry from Charleston was the author of the original Order of the Era handbook mm -hmm. in 1948 when it became part of the national uh, organization. And so Rucker Newberry is, is uh, revered in the Order of the Era lore and history as the author of the original original handbook. So yep. he was part of Unilee in Charleston. Yep, he's the founder of SR5. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is all of the different covers that have been used for the OA handbook. Starting in 2002, we started issuing the new handbook at every NOAC. Mm -hmm. So you got 2002, 2004, 2006, 2009, and then 2012, and then we'll have a new handbook cover that will be unveiled and given to everybody at 2015 for the centennial. And of course, a picture of Erner Goodman later in life. Uh, looked it up earlier this morning. He passed away in 1980. Mm -hmm. And these are the original ceremony books. These are some here. of the original ceremony books yeah. for the Ordale Brotherhood and, and Vigil Ceremonies. All right. And then we have this stuff over here. The variety, this is all related to our NOAC this year. Uh, Alex Call is our current national chief. That's his patch from Texas. Mm -hmm. And then this is the current national committee patch. You saw the first one. This is the centennial one with the centennial emblem on it. And from there, when the OA celebrated 50 years, Boys Life did a big feature about the 50th anniversary of the Order of the Era. And then Aerocore back in 2008 with five different sites that Air Corps was done on. There were patches related with each site. And then this one's one that the OA did to recognize uh, NISA at NOAC in 2012 when Eagle Scouts were celebrating their centennial 100th anniversary. And then this side are all of our fellowship patches and when there are sets that there's a Dixie patch many times related with the fellowships from that year. So these are all of the years starting back, Johnny, what's it, 1984 yeah. is the first fellowship I believe that we did a patch at. And then some of these some of these leather ones that are that are in here have some curious history that that uh, Johnny can tell tell you about. <laughs> 1990. As part of the tradition over the air, the boys are asked to do all the design work for patches and get them in by certain dates. Mm -hmm. In 1990, the boys that year uh, did not get the patch design in soon enough so it could be made by the embroidery company for the fellowship. So in order to have something to remember that fellowship, uh, one of the gentlemen of our lodge came in and made some uh, stamps on the leather and some of us painted them, some of them just took them as tokens, but that was our fellowship memorabilia from that weekend. <laughs> All right, and then, and then finally we've got the Dixies. Uh, the, uh, our lodge has, has sponsored the, the Dixie Fellowship a number of, number of times. Some of the times we've had neckerchiefs, I brought some of the early ones of those, and then I didn't bring all of the Dixie fellowships that, that Atacula Kula has done, but I did bring the most most recent ones that, that we've done from 1999 and from, uh, from 2010, our most recent Dixie that we, that we hosted. Mm -hmm. And there you go, the last little piece, kind of to close, close the loop, uh, Joe Satari, who's an artist, was the successor to Norman Rockwell, who for many, many decades did the Boy Scouts paintings and pictures, and he trained a young artist named Joseph Satari, and so Joe Satari has been our, our National Boy Scout artist for probably the last 20, 25 years. And Joe was commissioned by the Order of the Era to do a centennial painting, and that's what he did. The interesting part about this is that Nelson Block, who worked, who's a scouter, OA scouter from Texas, worked with Joe 
in putting together the materials and he called me and asked me could he borrow some of the uniforms in my collection to use for the models for the painting so all of these uniforms in this painting are uniforms that are in my collection oh wow that mr satari borrowed to use for his models to make that mm -hmm. to make that painting so that's kind of an interesting bit of trivia do you have them hanging up here i i don't i sent him a, a half dozen or so and i don't <laughs> know exactly which ones of the of those he used but they're just going to back in the collection now mm -hmm. well thank you mr smart You're and welcome thank, thank you, you mr johnny ray You're welcome.